Okay. Hi, everybody. Welcome. So glad to see you, <laughs> at least see your name, <laughs> and um, see a lot of familiar names and uh, some folks even from my own school. Thanks for coming out and joining me. Hope you can see my screen okay. It says it's loading for some reason. Because the internet is slow. The internet got a little slow. We have Let's to hope it speeds up. Yeah. Um, this, this is intended to be a bit interactive. So as Melinda said, um, I'm going to be asking you to share some things in the chat um, in a moment. Wow, still loading. Christy, try stop share. Okay. And then um, load your slides deck up. Okay. And then share. Alrighty. Okay. See, folks, we have tech problems, too. It's not just you. <laughs> I'm going to pause the recording just for a sec. Okay. Now start. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Try it one more time. Well, it doesn't want to show the first slide, but we'll just skip that. My name is Christy Reyes. Thank you for joining me today. Um, I am an ESL teacher um, located here in North San Diego County and really glad to see you all here today. Wish we could see each other face to face. Um, usually I do these sorts of workshops um, in a face-to-face -face sitting with hands out hands on in a computer lab so this will be a lot of me talking but I, I do want to make it interactive so already right now if you could type in the chat and remember Q&A is for questions chat is where we can communicate with each other um, type in what you teach and answer this question type yes or no in the chat are you familiar with Padlet go ahead and type yes or no and what you teach. Okay, we have ESL, math, GED. I'm seeing um, yeses, familiar, but haven't used yet. Mm -hmm. No, okay. ESL, no, not familiar, IT, EHL, and computers. No, I'm thinking there's more no's than yeses. Really? Wow, okay. It looks so, like it, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's been around for a long time, so um, that's that's always a positive. Sometimes websites come and they, they gain a lot of popularity and then they disappear or they gain a lot of popularity for us teachers and then they make us pay. So um, there there is a part of Palette that is still free. And like you, I've been using it, I think the first time I used it was more than 10 years ago. So I was kind of grandfathered in to this new, this, like the old way where I didn't have to pay anything and I could have multiple Palettes. But um, I going online, fully online, I have rediscovered different possibilities with Palette that I never had imagined before. So I would like to share that. I've tried to get examples from all different discipline areas, not just ESL. So um, I'm sure that everyone's going to walk away with this with one idea that you can use um, for integrating Palette into your instruction. So what is Palette? For any of you who are familiar with it, if you have been using it, um, provide an example in the chat or explain in your own words, what is Palette? Online bulletin board. Okay, there we go. Yes, anybody else? Bulletin board? Okay. Bulletin board we can all post to. Yes, yes, great. So the only, only thing I maybe add to that definition of Padlet is multimedia because you can post in multiple ways, include different, um, many different things. So yeah, it's just like the bulletin board you might have in your classroom where you're posting students work and information and so on. So yes, it's a multimedia bulletin board where students can add text, images, video, audio, hyperlinks, and files, and a whole bunch of different things. So it, it has grown. The possibilities with Padlet in the past few years have ex expanded. So I'm going to go over some different uses and then show you some specifics. And towards the end, we'll have you um, see a short demo and then have you post to a Padlet. So. Um, it could be something like an interactive syllabus. If you um, 
provide syllabi, syllabi to your students. It could be something that you share with them and, um, you know, showing different things on a calendar, could be lit, um, different files that you want students to do, assignments. It could be something like that. It could actually, even going further than just a syllabus, it could become a learning management system for you. Learning man management system is where you have everything for your course in one place and usually students have to log in right for this they wouldn't have to log in so you could um, have weekly activities all in one place all assignments you could link to quizzes and everything so it could be like a Moodle a canvas a blackboard it's just a little more simplified but that would be a possibility so um, teachers could use it to post class information announcements assignments agendas homework supplementary practice on different websites, course materials. As I said, it could be your LMS, linking even to other Padlets. Um, a lot of teachers like to use it for bookmarking. In other words, curating all the different websites that they found and different materials they found online. So, you know, going back to it, you wouldn't have to search through your bookmarks in your uh, web browser, but you could go to that one Padlet and find everything you were looking for. Um, as I will show you, um, some teachers who are providing professional development use Padlet as the medium for delivering the content. And um, if you are, you know, with your, within your department or your program area, you could be sharing um, either among the faculty and the staff or even with all of your students' school information, resources, updates, and so on. Um, if you are ever absent from a class and you need a substitute, you could put your lesson plan on Padlet. So those are some ways that teachers could use, use it. Um, as far as integrating Padlet into your classroom activities, um, typically how I've used um, Padlet in the past is as a place where students could in introduce themselves uh, um, during the first week or icebreakers. But as I returned to Padlet with this remote instruction, wow, there are so many different possibilities. You could have students document their learning goals for the class, uh, educational or career goals. Um, we know that goal setting um, becomes more of a realistic um, type of activity when people write down their goals and share with others. So um, goal setting in adult ed is a best practice. So this could be a resource for that. You could have students do writing based on the vocabulary you have taught them or the grammar you have been teaching them if you're teaching English or ESL. Um, a lot of times we do activities in a classroom where we have a picture or a prompt that we use as pre-reading to activate students' schemata about the content we're going to teach. Find out what they already know, kind of introduce the topic. Um, if you're using a video, it could be a previewing activity that you post onto Padlet and have students re respond to, or to open up a new unit or area of study in your class. Any sort of that information that you're trying to draw from them to see what they already know about the topic. Um, brainstorming. So brainstorming in a group, this is actually some activity that I have been doing um, with my online course that I'm teaching now, is um, I was thinking, how could I possibly, within Zoom, have students brainstorm in groups? So um, I'll show you how I did that, and um, it's, a, it's a great tool for that because, again, everybody from the class is in one space. Listing pros and cons, any sort of pre-writing activities that you do, word webs or um, mind maps and things could be done on Padlet. If you teach history, um, this the, one of the new types of walls on Padlet are timelines. So you could have students um, present biographies, autobiographies, or history of a certain era. You could use Palette for scavenger hunts and web quests. I don't know if you've ever heard of a web quest. If you know what a web quest is, can you type yes or no in the chat? If you know what a web quest is, do you know? Type yes or no. Um, let's so say much. about 70% no. Okay. Well, no, 80% no, 20% okay. yes. So look it up after this. Um, 
it was a professor at San Diego State University, I think um, quite a few years back, he came up with this type of learning activity where you have students do some you have links to different things you want them to read or watch online and they're going through these steps and ending up with an end product usually. So um, I, I don't think I have an example of a web quest necessarily here, but I do have an example of a scavenger hunt. So it's got that similar idea where students are visiting different places online and then coming up with some sort of response, whether that's a uh, an essay or a video or whatever. Um, you could have students submit assignments on Padlet um, so they could um, work on some assignment maybe on Google Docs or Google Slides and they could submit the URL. So that could be a repository of um, different assignments that you are giving in your class. Um, if you're in the sciences, for example, if you teach um, in those areas, you could explain processes or how to's or have students do that as well. So you could, uh, if you ever include um, some sort of project where students are explaining how to do something that they know how to do, Padlet is a great place to do that with the timeline. You could have debates, discussions, four corners is how I've recently used um, Padlet, so I'll explain about that if you're not familiar with that activity coming up. You could have students um, post their favorite apps, websites, videos, or other online resources for learning in your subject area. Um, jigsaw reading, I don't know if you're familiar with that um, activity. Um, what you can do with jigsaw reading is um, you have perhaps a longer reading and you divide your students up into groups and then a certain group is responsible for a certain section of the reading and then they go and they explain that that section of the reading to their classmates. Um, so yes, um, I see a couple of questions in the chat. Um, can students submit work that is written on paper? Well, probably how they you would have them do that best is to take a photo if they've write, written on paper and um, they could they could with their phone um, they could go to your palette wall and add that photo of what they've written. That would be a possibility, yes. Um, so yeah, that would be better than um, having everybody text you their work if they're doing paper-based work, because I've tried that before with a video project and it was chaos. Um, I had different um, videos coming at me from all kinds of different ways. So the benefit would be the Padlet is one place where you would find everything, yes. Um, and Karen asks, in a jigsaw activity, is there a way that the students do not see the other parts of the reading? I imagine there is either by emailing specific groups or you could have two, two or three, depending on how many different groups you use for the jigsaw activity. You could have different Padlets um, for each group to see and then what you could do is then one Padlet where they come together and, and teach the other groups, yes. Um, can you post audio on Padlet? Yes, you can. Um, so a, an audio response to a prompt, like if, for example, that you, um, it, I don't know if anyone here teaches citizenship, um, you could put some of those 100 questions either in an audio file, so only listening, or in a te text, and they could answer by um, recording their answers, audio files, yes. Um, okay, so let's look at a couple of other things that um, you can do for class activities. Do you, do you know what this word means, back channel? Type yes or no in the chat. No, 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 okay. no, 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 no. Okay, so I, I'm not sure where this term came up with, uh, where it's from, but I remember uh, almost 10 years ago, I think it was where I attended a TESOL um, international convention, and um, a lot of younger teachers <laughs> um, really were demonstrating a lot of great tech use, and one of them is back channel. So someone would be presenting, but they said, hey, this is the, this is where you can, um, with this hashtag on Twitter, you can be asking questions to each other or responding while I'm giving this presentation. So similar with your students, while you're presenting something, you could have them have this Padlet open and they could be responding or asking questions. Instead of interrupting you, then you can look at the back channel after you have finished um, 
presenting the information. You can have surveys, voting, class feedback. So it could be uh, perhaps linking to a survey that you create on Google Forms, but the voting uh, um, is right within Padlet. They don't need to go anywhere else. So I'll show you that in a moment. Um, students could ask and answer questions, submit homework, as I said. Group projects, this is a great place to do um, group projects um, because <clears throat> students can all come together on one um, Padlet. As I said, timelines, biography, history, graphic organizers, the Venn diagram, KWL. Does anybody know what KWL is? Go ahead and type that in the chat. One yes, couple no's. Another yes, and then okay. no, 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 yes, yes, no, 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 yes, yes. Okay, Starts. so about half. Okay, so KWL is um, a technique that you use pre-reading um, or, you know, pre any sort of unit that you're going to start or subject topic that you're going to start teaching. You have students um, write what they know already about the topic, what they want to learn, and after they have been taught or read or seen a video or whatever the activity is, what they learned. So it's, um, it's a great way for students to start thinking about what they already know, for you to see what they already know. Yes, so it says a um, couple questions. Can the teacher correct a student's upload home, uploaded homework on the pad? You, yeah, there, there would be a couple ways you could do that. Um, you could respond in text. So if you um, create a Padlet and allow commenting on posts, then you could um, comment that way. Um, and then can we add a Padlet to Canvas? And I think there was a previous question. Padlet um, does not currently have integration with Canvas. Some different sites like Flipgrid and Quizlet do have integration, but Padlet not yet that I know of. So what I would do in Canvas, um, what I have done, is I just create a page or create an assignment and I put the link. So it will take them out of Canvas, but then their time is still tracked within Canvas. So um, even though they're having to leave, as long as they started in Canvas and then come back to it, we're, we're pretty good with that. So yes, thank you for those questions. Um, so kind of diagramming or pre-reading or idea generating can be done on Padlet. Class publications, maybe as, as you come towards the end of the term, you could collect one best work of each student and it could be their kind of like showcase of their work. Um, book reports, reviews, summaries, entry and exit tickets. Um, so an entry ticket would be um, if, if uh, yesterday I taught something sort of new and we practice a little bit and when students come back to class on Monday as they come in I could have the QR code for the Padlet okay well they're not coming into the classroom but I could have that posted somewhere emailed to them or texted to them and they can go to that link and answer a question so that I can see if they remember what I taught them yesterday right an exit ticket is a similar idea formative um, assessment to see <clears throat> if students were able to grasp and retain the information that you taught them. E-portfolios, so um, portfolio, you know, is the student's best work over the time in your class. So putting it online in one place for the student, and I'll show you an example of that. And um, you could have students give feedback or suggest class activities that they would like to do on a Padlet. And so um, Ingrid asked, how do we connect it in Zoom? Well, I'm gonna show you at the end. Um, when, I, when I demo making a Padlet, you can then share the URL in the chat. That's the way that we would share within Zoom. Okay, so for those of you who have used or you are using now Padlet in the chat, type in um, one or two things that you think are its good features. Nobody's typing. Oh. oh, using video in Padlet. Video. Mm -hmm. Easy to use, beautiful graphics, mm -hmm. visual organization, multimedia, quick setup. Posting easily. Commenting. Organization. I can add all my content in one place. Love the timeline. <laughs> Easy to use. Mm -hmm. No login. 
Yeah, great. I mean, that's exactly what I have too. So um, could I ask my students to meet me in Padlet and share a PowerPoint I uploaded and can discuss it together? I'm sure that's possible. Um, meet me in Padlet share a PowerPoint I uploaded. Yeah, so you could link um, the PowerPoint as a file in Padlet and say, okay, everybody meet me here at this time. Let's look at the PowerPoint. So they're doing it independently looking at the PowerPoint. It's not live like a um, like Zoom would be. And then, you know, have the discussion right there on that Padlet. Yes, I do think you could do that. Students love it. Interactive students have to put that don't have to put their name. Yes. So yeah, the newer thing, um, since when I first started using Padlet, this is not new, new, it's been around for a few years now, but newer is that um, there are new types of walls. So the first one you see there on the top left is just the standard um, students posting and it kind of goes um, horizontally and then it goes to the next row and you can see there are different lengths of the posts and so on. A newer one is, is Canvas and that is where things can be scattered and grouped and connected. So that would be great for mind mapping and webbing and that kind of activity or showing a process as well. Stream, um, I, I don't really love stream, but it is does have some good uses. You know, when you use a blog or you read a blog, the posts are, are coming in uh, chronologically, and that's kind of what this one is, the stream. So it's easy to read top to bottom feed. So it's just going in a, in a vertical row, okay? A grid is whereby you arrange content in rows of boxes. So it's going across. Um, the newer one that is awesome is the shelf. I was just racking my brain trying to figure out a way for students to do group brainstorming. Um, it could also be a great place to do pros and cons, any sort of problem solving activities that could be your best bet right there, shelf. And I'll show you an example. As I mentioned, back channel. So they're chatting sort of um, on the Padlet as you're presenting. And then you, you visit that Padlet to see what was going on and how they were reacting while you were presenting. A map is a newer um, one. And um, I'll show you how you can do that. But you know, um, probably if you teach history or different types of things, um, that would be a good one. For those of us who teach ESL, this is awesome. This is perfect um, for students to be able to show where they're from. And a timeline does not only have to be used as a timeline. So I'll show you some examples. So a lot of the examples I'm going to show are not things I created, but that I just went through their gallery and found some examples. I did the footwork for you so you can see many different things. Padlet is completely free and you record who is logging into your Padlet. Well, it, um, you can. So there are different privacy um, settings for Padlet that um, if, you, if you were to have um, students log in with uh, or enter a password um, to enter the Padlet, then you could see um, respond. And um, yeah, so it is free, yes. Okay, so some of the benefits, as you saw a variety of walls, there are many beautiful backgrounds and designs and you can even upload your own image for a background. It's super easy teacher setup. You can create a wall in a minute, and super easy student use. When you share the URL, the QR code, um, however you decide to share your Padlet wall, all they need to do is either double click if they're on a computer, double tap or tap once if they're on a phone or other device, um, or I'll show you that there is, as you can see that um, red circle, that's usually down in the bottom right, which reminds me a lot of Google Docs and things. You're usually looking for that plus sign. They can, they can also just touch there to enter. Um, Multi-platform, so you don't have to worry, oh, I'm, I'm using a Mac. No, it doesn't matter. It, you just need internet. Um, and it, so it works on any type of device and posts can be commented and voted on, okay, and liked. So as, as um, some of you responded, yes, it's not just for writing, not just text. You can use images, you can put in video, screencasting even, drawing even. So it's got all these new different things that are possible. So for the, the third icon that you see that has the um, magnifying glass with the web. So when you go there, 
what it will do is take you to this search box where you can search for images, videos, GIFs, um, audio, and, and web links. So you, can, you don't necessarily even have to exit out of Padlet. You can do this within Padlet searching. So um, there is in the text area, title. So what I, if I want students to um, provide their names, I usually tell them to put their name in the title and then they enter in text. The upload, the up arrow, 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 arrow excuse me, is for the uploading. The hyperlink, so linking to anything that's online with the URL. Um, the search, the camera, that allows you to upload or use your webcam if you give access. So for a device that has a built-in um, camera. And then you see the three dots that go to all these other possibilities. This is a bit newer for Padlet. So it's got everything here. Um, searching in Google, taking a picture with your camera, capturing video from your camera, recording audio from your microphone. So there's that question about can students reply by audio? Yes. Um, it's even got screencasting now. Um, so a lot of times we use um, Loom is my favorite to do a quick tutorial of what's on my screen, but you can do this now inside of Padlet. Isn't that amazing? Drawing, adding a location, linking to other Padlets. That's what those three dots are when you, um, when you are posting. Wow, lots of possibilities here, huh? So I think um, whoever is in charge of Padlet, they are working for us teachers, aren't they? Um, other benefits is, are privacy and moderation. You can set a Padlet just for students to read and no commenting. You can set it for can write, so they can post and write. And you could even set it as that they can edit. So they've posted something and then they, they change their mind and want to change that post, they can come in and do that if you set the moderation and privacy as that. Um, walls can be set to allow others to delete and edit their post and set their own background colors. This one's a little bit newer. So um, I'll show you an example of that shortly. So you can see the different privacy options in, the, in that first um, screenshot there. So private, it's hidden from everyone, um, but even if the link is shared, then uh, you know they won't be able to access. Have a password, so it's hidden from the public, but when you share it with your students, they'll have to enter a password to enter. Secret, um, so if you share it, only the people with the link can have it. I usually leave mine at public. I've never had anyone find my link and put something there. I, I've never had that happen. So um, yeah, that's that's basically um, what that is. I, that's the setting that I use for privacy setting. So again, you can see the can read, can write, can edit. And then on the far right screenshot, you see how students can, when they go to post, they go to the three dots and they can choose the color of their um, of their posting the background color. So if you can edit, can the students change what the teacher posts? Uh, let's check it out. I think so, but I, let's check it out. That's a good question, Beverly. So yeah, if you if you don't want them to, I've never had any problem with students doing this, but um, we'll we'll check it in just a bit. So what are some benefits, um, other benefits? It, someone entered in the chat that it's somewhat synchronous. So the posts as they're coming on are live. You can see students entering it. So um, that's a great thing that, um, that you don't have to wait or anything to see the posts. Um, let's say that you have a, um, a Padlet wall you've set up and you wanna use it again, but with a new class, you can remake it and just delete the previous posts. Um, you can create a unique URL for each of your Padlet walls, and there are multiple ways you can share. You can share um, the URL, you can embed on um, an LMS like Moodle or Canvas or Blackboard. You can share a QR code, um, and you can take your walls and export them as different file types. So as you can see, you can, um, you can export your Padlet wall as an image, a PDF file, and so on, or print it out. Of course, the multimedia part will not be there as an image or a PDF, but. Okay, are there any negatives? If you 
are using or have used Padlet in the chat, can you type any negatives you have experienced with Padlet? This would be for the people who actually use it, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you use or have used. Crickets? Students can change the teacher's Padlet, so be careful. Oh, okay. When sharing QR code, it takes up the whole screen. Uh, not really motivated, seem other ways are less work. Yeah. Mm, okay. Uh, it's been a little hard to learn the first and second time for low level students ESL. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Someone sent me a Padlet wall and it seemed confusing to me as a non user. Hmm. Okay. So um yeah, it would be good to be able to demo how to post to your students. Um, I've taught lots of different levels. I've not really had students um, have troubles posting or understanding what to do, but I, I was able to either in person demo or um, you could create a, a short screencast to show them how. Okay, so the main benefit um, well, sorry, we went over the benefits. The one negative is that if you want more than three Padlets and you, you're just using Padlet, you didn't start using it a long time ago, you'll need to pay for unlimited Padlets. You get three for free. So that's why the remaking is good. So you know, um, I don't want to use this Padlet anymore. I can delete it or I can remake it and delete the other, whatever. Um, it's not expensive. It's $8 a month, but I'm really cheap. I never like to pay for anything. So I just, you know, if I had those three, I would just, you know, delete after the class is done and make a new one or remake it and delete the original, something like that. So you get three uh, palettes for free. Um, with this $8 a month, you get a lot of other things, but honestly, I would just go for the free version. So um, I want to show you some examples. As I said in the beginning, this is not um, just, these aren't all my work at all. Um, some of them, I was just browsing around in their gallery and trying to find a lot of different examples to help you open your mind to the possibilities. So um, for your agency, um, I know we have counselors and um, they've created something that's really hard for our students to find, um, but this could be certain Q&A or frequently asked questions that you could post, send to your teachers, the teachers could share that one URL with all their students and they could get that information that way. Um, you could have students or you as a teacher could create a class blog and that's with the um, type of wall that's a stream just going straight down. Um, you could make, have students, um, you or you could have your students as well, but you could create a home page so you could give some information about your class, about me. If you have a lot of meetings, there is a template for um, agendas. You could keep your meeting minutes. You could even create a resume on a Padlet. So that's how um, teachers and programs could use it. Um, I've been seeing it used a lot in conferences. So this first screenshot you see there, that was um, in 2016 when I did a presentation on formative assessment for Katisal. So we, they did the Padlet in the workshop. So asking that question, how many of you have used this tool and or what do you use for formative assessment? And I could see what they use already live right there without having everybody speak in the conference. Just I went there to that one page and I see, oh, okay, they already know Socrative or Kahoot. I'm not gonna spend as much time on that. Um, <clears throat> some of our OTAN subject matter experts have done um, some webinars recently. I did one a couple of weeks ago, and um, what I did was I, let me see if it's gonna go to the link, there we go. I um, had the participants just like you post to this wall. So you can see, you can have lots and lots of posts and they were commenting on each other's posts. And I didn't ask them to put their names because it was just gathering information. So um, that's an example of how you might use a Padlet in um, any sort of professional development. And then Stephanie Thomas <clears throat> from San Diego Community College District, um, she did this really great um, presentation. You can see uh, 
a screenshot of her um, webinar right there. She used Padlet and Zoom. And so she went, this was her presentation. So um, after this, you will get um, a copy of this um, slideshow that I'm giving you and you'll be able to look at um, what she has created. This is also posted on the OTAN website under the COVID resources. So um, you can see she used what is known as the shelf, different headings on each type. So she, she presented a lot of excellent resources for moving your course online. Um, you know, sometimes, I, actually I wanna show this one because I wish I could attend a conference like this. <laughs> Um, evidently, this was some sort of um, this was some sort of donut pastry conference. <laughs> anyway, so you know, conferences, PD, having people introduce themselves, you could use that. And then there's a sample that I will I won't show now, but um, you could have um, yourself, or you could have students create a digital business card as well. Okay, so now we're going to go into the class activities. So um, are, how many of you are using Zoom or some sort of video conferencing to present to your class, to run your classes? Let's see. Yes, Zoom, me, yes, Google Meet, yep, okay. Google Meet, using Zoom, 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 Screencastify, yes, Zoom, yes, okay. yes, hi, CC, yes, Zoom, yes. <laughs> cool. So um, what I'm noticing not as much, but the same sort of thing that happens in my on-ground face-to-face classes happens online where students don't necessarily get there on time. <laughs> um, so what I've been doing is having some sort of um, image or question that the early comers can respond to instead of just sitting there waiting for everybody else to get there because I, I want to start my lesson at the same time you could do a check-in like this where you create a palette and then you share it in the chat and you ask them to go there and you know they could say it says which one shows your current mood and why add a uh, comment by typing your name and an explanation under the picture so um if this one is how he's feeling today or your student, they can add a comment or this one. So, di you know, different GIFs, but these are all from Giphy, by the way. Um, and, you know, it could be a, a way to just open up your class until your, your majority of your students are, are there, okay? So that's something that could be fun for your students too. Um, you can have your class assignments posted and homework resources. So one of my colleagues in my pr um, program, Ryan, who, um, who is the creator of ESL Video, he is teaching two multi-level classes, bless his heart. Um, and so he shared with me and said that he did not mind if I share with you, that he has created a wall that is one of those shelves. And so he has a date and homework and He's having students uh, watch videos and practice their English with friends episodes. And so he's, it goes kind of chronologically, horizontally in that way. So, um, you know, you could offer your course on Padlet if you wanted to do that. It's a possibility. So when you, as I mentioned, when you come back to this um, slideshow, you can look at all of the hyperlinks. I'm just gonna focus on um, one or two per slide. So I typically used um, Palette just for icebreakers and introductions. And um, so this was a great way for me to get to know students, get a little bit of diagnostic about their writing, but then they could look at it in, in since we, in that time, we were in a computer lab, but now that if you're online, they can be seeing what everyone else is posting and get acquainted with each other. So um, people put in videos, put, people put in images. Um, so it turned out really well. It was a great way to have students introduce each other. What I do usually do then is then, um, if we're in the classroom, I open this up and have students present themselves. Um, and you could, if you're using uh, Zoom or Google Hangouts or whatever, you could also do that, have students um, unmute themselves and tell you what, what they have here for their introduction. So um, the prompt is there, you can see when you visit this uh, slideshow. Um, you could have students create an about me 
um, Padlet. And so that would be them creating their own Padlet and making it so that it's, it, no one can really write on it, just view it. And so they could, you know, if, if you have more time and you have more advanced students, they could create an about me like this with some direction about, you know, um, who they are, what their goals are. Um, you can see on this one where they live, um, pets, <laughs> favorite music or something, what they like to read, favorite food. So that would be really fun too. So let me see, I see a couple um, questions in the question answer. If you um, purchase once, you make new ones, you would use them, if, uh, lose them if canceled. Um, I'm not sure about that. I'm sorry, I'm not really sure to purchase once, make new ones. So Christy, if you put mm, oh, oh, the premium it. version mm -hmm. and then you make 20 Padlets, would you lose them if you canceled them? Um, I don't have a definitive answer, but I would say no. I would imagine no, because um, I have all these Padlets from a long time ago and they didn't disappear. So I, th I think once you've created it, it will still be there. Is Giphy free? Yes, it is. Yes. And um, so it has lots of great gifts that you can put into a slideshow or students could even um, go there and find a um, something to put in a palette. How can I get rid of the plus signs that are there to add content once I've completed my palette? Melinda, do you get, I'm not sure I got the question. I'm sorry. It's probably me. I'm a little bit slow today. Um, okay. Once you post a Padlet, um, if you don't want students to interact with the Padlet. Okay. Yeah. So if you want students just to visit and read and view something there within the sharing options, you, you will select only can view. And then if, if you've had them post and you don't want any more posts, you can change the privacy or um, editing moderating capabilities at that point. Yes, you could. Um, so you set up separate palettes for the About Me activity. Um, so this would be um, students making their own palette for this case, but you could have one palette where all students come together and do an About Me. I would probably do it that case in the shelf. So you would maybe go in and put with their name and then they are posting only under that area so you could have a class about me too yes let me see any other questions okay all right all right so let's look at some other other examples um, lots of things you could do for class activities if you have students make a presentation about a place or just about any presentation they could use padlet so i've linked here but i won't go there um, someone made a presentation about the seven wonders of the world, or I don't know if it's the ancient wonders or current win wonders of the world, I believe. Um, I love this, that there's a map now. There's so many cool things you could do with a map. So I put this into my um, Canvas course and I asked students to go there and um, put a pin where they're from originally. These are ESL students. And I think there are a couple I wanna show you because then they could put in pictures and more. Was it this one? I think it's this one. Nope, this one. So this student is from Russia. She lived in a couple different places, I believe, and she put in a picture of the Northern Lights. And then I'll go over here. I think it was, well, I'll go back to Mexico over here. I think it was this one, this one. So this person's from Nayarit, Mexico. He put in a beautiful picture. And then this one, my student from Mexico City, this is actually a picture of her. Um, this must have been downtown or something I don't know but um, you see this beautiful display so they could put in pictures and videos of um, on the pins located where they're from so lots of yeah it's really easy so it's a little bit different um, this one is not made to be able to be edited but in the bottom right there's that little pin marker and they can drag it or they type in they type in the city where the, and it will go to that place because, um, you know, I probably would not be accurate myself at putting a pin where I'm from necessarily. So it will go to those coordinates actually. So yes, I think it's probably integrated a bit with Google Maps or something, I'm not sure. So um, a lot of different things you could do with that. 
um, as I mentioned at the beginning, you could have students set goals. So this is just a simple one that is from the gallery that I found. This person made short-term goals and long-term goals. And we know when we have students set goals for our class, that is um, something that is very effective because then, first of all, you know what their needs are and then you can meet their needs and point out to them. The reason why I'm teaching this is because you have the goal of this and you need this to be able to reach your goal. Um, for vocabulary, you could, um, you could assign students all the same vocabulary word or you could assign students different vocabulary words probably taken from a reading and they could put the definition of, of the vocabulary word um, they could write out um, perhaps the the different synonyms maybe an antonym or two an original sentence maybe a sentence that the um, vocabulary word actually came from whatever text that was and then this is kind of like your class dictionary so everybody can go there and see oh you defined it with this picture I, I use more of a picture like this so um, in kind of like what you may have in your classroom a vocabulary wall or bulletin board and so this would just be the multimedia version of that Okay, so I did some searching within the gallery and I see some other ways that teachers are doing this. So this looks like a high school biology class you see here and that um, teacher put um, all kinds of different resources for each unit in the textbook. So students could go there, see some supplementary information. She has their notes and she has video and all kinds of great things about um, the parts of the body I guess it is and then um, I want to show one in a moment but this one um, this one was the class was reading about the the biography of Malala and so she had discussion questions so she the teacher who made this she made it so that they cannot actually interact this it was only can view not can edit or post but um, it was kind of like um, where she was putting discussion questions before each chapter and so students could kind of focus their reading. So um, that's something you could do. I'll show you this one as well. So curation means the way of taking all different resources that you have that you someday want to use with your students. So this one, the teacher um, put all kinds of resources about global warming. So maybe she's going to have the students do some writing she'll have students do um, a presentation and there are lots of resources here that she wants them to visit actually rather than just send them into the World Wide Web on their own so you can curate resources gather up your resources as kind of like digital bookmarks let me see a couple of questions um, yes so review archiving oh archiving padlets um, thanks Marisol Mary, Marisol, maybe if you know how to do that yourself, you can share with us. Um, I'm not sure about archiving because when I log in, they're just all there. So um, I'm not sure I know how to do that. Um, Betty, do all of these activities require their own Padlet? Um, yes. So um, each of the activities I'm showing you um, are, are one Padlet wall. Okay, when you go to the gallery, I'll, I'll give the link at the end. The ga there is um, the general gallery and then there's an educator's gallery as well. Okay, so let's go on. Um, you remember that KWL? So this is probably from elementary school or something. The example you see there, what do we know about giraffes and students? Um, student either the teacher was recording probably in this case um, the different things the students responded um, but then she could come back to it you know in a day or two after they have already done the reading about giraffes i really like this one um, this seems to be something more at the high school level level yeah marisol you could um link a flip flipboard flip grid i think is what you mean yeah um so here this is a higher level human body systems um looks like high school level so what i know you know what what the lungs are for and what skin is and all that and then what they want to know and what they learned so i believe that this person set up this wall as the shelf so that gives it a, like overhead 
title, and then students came and posted here. This is how um, I have used Palette very recently, just a couple of weeks ago in my class where students, we were reading about the obesity problem here in the United States and how fast food is not very um, healthy. And um, so their paragraph topic was about um, the question of whether fast food should have warning labels like cigarettes do and like you know cleaning materials do. And, even alcohol has a warning label. So I put them in groups and then I shared the URL within Zoom in the chat and they together with their group, they were talking among themselves. I did breakout groups and then they were talking and they posted their answers. So each group had two columns on the shelf layout and they answered yes with different reasons and I told them even if you think yes they should I, you need to think of the opposite uh, side play the devil's advocate and think of no as well okay so Betsy says where is the map um, so I'll show you that in just a bit it's one of the wall types so yes okay um, this is another example of um, how I used this Padlet wall as a unit opener, as pre-writing, pre-reading, pre-listening. And so I have a unit that um, we do some reading about happiness around the world. We watch a documentary. And then um, eventually students um, write a paragraph defining happiness in their own you know, meaning. And then um, they make a presentation as well. So before we did any of the reading, I just asked them to go to this wall and say, um, what are five things that make you happy? Double click anywhere, begin writing, type your first name, type five complete sentences. You can add a picture or video as you like. And then we read this all together and they had lots of different ideas. And then this was pretty much the outline for their paragraph, right? So I just explained to them, well, you, you say that spending time with your family and friends is something that makes you happy, but you need to explain a little bit more about that. Do students need to have two devices to do the group work in Zoom? No. Um, it can be tricky, especially on a phone, because as Melinda said at the beginning of this, they'll need to do something to their Zoom room to um, change the view options so they can go back and forth between their Zoom room and the Padlet. Yeah, so I hope that answers your question. If not, I can come back to it. Um, so let's see. You can hold class discussions on a Padlet. So uh, one of my colleagues, Katrina, she is teaching a level four ESL and she asked them to, she asked her students to post to this Padlet about what is social distancing for you. And um, they gave their definitions and you can see there were likes. I don't know if you can see it's very small, but there's like a one like for the first post, two likes, even a comment for one of those. This is my very first Padlet I'll show you. And it used to be that um, the post-its or the, the posts were on top of each other. I really hated that. So I went in and fixed it. But, um, you know, if you have a holiday coming up or, you know, any kind of reading or viewing that you have students do, it's good to activate their background information. But this one was just before, um, before Valentine's Day. And so students went in there and they answered the question. What is the most romantic, whatever, movie, song, act someone has ever done for you, evening, idea for a date, place. And then we came back to this and like, okay, gentlemen, this is where you should take your wife for dinner tomorrow. So um, it, was, it was just something kind of fun to do. Um, so it doesn't all have to be academic, serious, and stuffy. It could be fun. Um, I want to show you this one as well. So this was an assignment actually, and it was a group um, posting assignment. So the teacher shared a documentary about climate change, and then the students had to somehow meet up. Maybe they were texting each other. I don't really know this teacher, but then they came together here. Most of them were in groups and they posted their responses. So they had to uh, write a blog post is what she called it. So their, their reactions to the documentary that they watched. So um, if you use novels, books, you could have group discussions. Um, you could have preview discussion questions about a book or reading passage before the class meeting and so on. 
And can you reformat palette without losing any posts? I believe you can. I just think that there are some that you wouldn't be able to, like a map. The map, you can't reformat. But if you started off with, um, perhaps you started with a grid and you want to make it into just a wall, you can. It just, the timeline, um, I, I believe the timeline, the shelf, and the canvas would not be able to remake in the different formats because they're very specific to different postings. And Christy, okay. the previous mm -hmm. slide was in reference to the social distancing. Oh, you want to see what they what they put? Okay. So this this student put, and I ask students not to put their last names, but anyway, I just you know I tell them they can even um, use a nickname or something. Um, this one says, I'm, um, it's very important. I'm working with my colleagues, so we protect ourselves from the contagion. Um, it is living together, but keeping a dis distance. It's a precaution for me and the rest of the world. Wow, really great vocabulary. Um, I'll be working alone on happy face with no coworkers in my department because only one person per department is going to be working, but I could stay home. Um, enjoying my family. Yes. So that was, and then, so you see the last post, someone commented. Um, so either the student wasn't sure how to make their post or they just, you know, wanted to react to that other student's post. So yeah, that could be something, you know, especially with this, there's, there's a lot of loneliness, a lot of chances for anybody in this time to get a little bit of depression. So this kind of, this could be actually therapeutic probably in some way. And yes, what I could do, I won't do it because that's not my palette, but you could go in, if students typed too much information, you could go in and edit it since it's your palette account. Where do you reformat a palette? So you go into your palette account and you can, you can choose and see all of your palettes. You can select one and then you can go to the um, options of setup and you can change it, yeah. But again, there are some you don't wanna change. The ones you could change would be wall, stream, um, take a, a test on the Quiet Revolution um, website and they find out whether they are tending to be more introverted person, extroverted, or if they're somewhere in the middle, an ambivert, and then they write a paragraph. So before we even got into that unit, what I usually do in my classroom is I have these words that you see at the top of each um, area, and there are four corners, and I say, okay, let's go over these words, and now I want you to get up, walk to the corner that has the words that describe you best, and give like a couple of examples. But obviously we can't do this, we're not in a classroom. So I was racking my brain how I wanna do this. It's such a great part of this lesson plan that I do. So that's when I rediscovered Padlet and this shelf that you see here is the way to do a four corners. So it could be just about any class topic that you want students to discuss. So then um, students, you know, I shared this, actually shared the URL for this Padlet wall in Canvas. Students clicked there and we didn't do it live in Zoom. It was kind of after class homework and they typed in their responses. Oh God, it was like, it was like a revelation, like I'm saved. Um, Cause I, it was very hard to think of how you could do four corners online. This is the solution, shelf, a shelf wall. You could have students create e-portfolios. Um, so I'll show you a quick example. This is one I found in the gallery. And so I would not be able to find this if the student had not made it public. So you want to, you, if you do have students make their own walls, you want to explain that. Because I don't think she probably wants everyone to know her, her high school transcript. But I found, so I won't go there, but I'm just going to show you this as an example. This was her senior portfolio. So sometimes um, folks in high school and for sure in CTE areas, they, they make a portfolio. I love this one, um, this book reviews. So there's a question about can they put audio? So this is from a high school. Um, I guess the, the teacher, English language arts, assigned our students selected a book that they want to read and made a book report. So they, these are their book reports with images. Um, the SoundClouds for some reason didn't work, but if I go down, there are, there's audio 
that the students added to their book report. So they, the teacher could hear them talking, they could hear each other's talking and also read at the same time. So that's a great use for, for um, ESL teachers. Hey, we could put something we want students to read and we could um, read it on SoundCloud or some other online voice recording device or website and we could put the link there so the students could hear what they are reading the text okay class projects um one teacher created a quiz but this was the type of quiz where you still write it on paper but i just wanted to include that as an example here's the timeline so um you see this one the teacher made this the planets of the solar system so students could be assigned to do something like this as well and then I'll show this one. I know we probably don't teach dinosaurs a whole lot in adult ed, but um, it's a timeline of the different types of dinosaurs. Um, here's a teacher that made, use the timeline, not really for posting, but more for instructional content, showing the scientific method. Um, these other examples you can visit on your own a plot diagram if students are reading novels if they are reading um, Any kind of text and you want them to sketch out main ideas and details So lots of different possibilities with the timeline. Here's an example. I found um, it's you know We often do that find someone who in the first week of class or sometimes to practice a certain topic um, in class and so this was a find someone who um, I don't know why they used to map as the background. I wouldn't use a map, but this was like um, find someone in your neighborhood who rides a bike to work. So you could do this more as a scavenger hunt where they're looking for things online and they could post the link. So um, that's getting close to something that's like a web quest then. Um, I found a, gr a couple really great how-tos. You see the one in front of you, this person put how to train for your first marathon, and they use the shelf, as you can see. So they've got each part, each section uh, under the shelf under a heading. And then um, this one is just so beautiful. They, they did not use the shelf. Instead, they used what is the, called the stream like a blog. So it, it works really well with this linear type of explanation how to create a mural. So I'm sure there's some content from your class that students could present as a how-to. Um, so I have a couple questions here. Could you show us how to start the Padlet Vocabulary Class Dictionary? You're lucky, Jesus, I have a link to um, something that you can create really easily, I believe. Um, Amy, in Canvas, do you have your students write their names on their responses, or do you have stats? Um, so I usually don't have students create their own palettes. I haven't gotten to that stage yet. Instead, I have them just posting to palette. And I, I tell them just to put your, their first name. When I used an embedded palette, my students came up. Oh, that's interesting. Um, so yeah, there is a way to embed a palette within Canvas. If we have time at the end, I'll, I'll look at one. I don't recall that um, students' names were erased. Um, but I'll check into that and Amy, uh, I'll try to get back to you on that if we have time at the end or if you want to email me your question, I can check on that too. Um, do you ever do readings? This is a fun activity. So one time I had a reading that we did in class, it was about the brain. And um, to guide their reading, I came up with before we read like these questions like, how much does the human brain weigh? One pound? three to five pounds, 10 pounds, what do you think? Or it could be like this one that you see, true or false or fact or fiction. So kind of a pre-reading activity where they're voting, okay? Um, no writing, just voting. So you're just creating the questions in post to a Padlet, and then you can create it so their likes or, or dislikes, um, you know, the thumb up, thumb down, or stars, or whatever you choose. And then you can have um, this, you know, you can have the students go to that palette and vote. And then after the reading, come back like, oh, 50% of you weighs 10 pounds. You're wrong. But what did we learn in the reading? So it's um, a way you could do pre-reading activities. Um, for an exit ticket, so this is at the end of a class or the end of a unit or a learning um, objective um, that you give students feedback. Um, actually, students are giving you feedback on what they learned. 
Okay, so this one, the, the teacher said, write down one thing you learned and one thing you're confused about. So that's a good formative assessment too. So the next class, the teacher knows I need to go back and cover the greenhouse effect a bit more. I didn't explain it very well today. I use Padlet 2. Um, I teach eight week terms and at the end of week four, I ask students to honestly give me feedback. I tell them this class is your class. I want it to meet your needs. Tell me what you need more of. You do not have to put your name. So you can see no one did put their name, but you know, it says um, basically these questions, double click on the page and type your responses to these questions. What do you like so far? Um, what is difficult for you? What do you want to practice more? So then week five, I come back and you thank you for the information. You said you want to practice more of this. I'm delivering. And we know from research that when you clearly and explicitly match your instruction to students' needs, they stay in your class, right? Otherwise, they, they start asking, why am I here? Why am I learning this? So there are Padlet apps. I've not used the app, to be honest. But um, there are um, apps for both Apple products and Android products. Those are the links there. And there's something called... Um, Padlet Mini, and basically it's not the same thing. It's what it is, is it's like um, a bookmarking tool. So you can add it to your Chrome um, browser as an extension. And so it, what it does, you know, I have my bookmarks that are just um, the titles of the web pages, but this will create kind of a more of a view of what's on that web page. So you can see what's on that web page for your bookmarks. If you need more ideas, I have a couple of links here. We have about 15 minutes left that you can visit. I don't know if you've ever heard of this gentleman. Um, I can't think of his last name, but um, his first name is Matt, and he has this incredible website, um, Ditch That Textbook, and he has all kinds of great ideas. He is like more K through 12, but there's a ton of stuff that you could learn for adult ed, not just Padlet, but all kinds of different excuse me, all kinds of different um, websites and apps. And then here's one, um, 30 creative ways to use Padlet for teachers and students as well. If you still need more ideas, then it, there is a best of education gallery that's separate from the general get gallery where um, they've curated different assignments and things that, and resources that teachers like. So you can get some ideas there as well. And so what I'm going to do now is um, a short demo. Um, I didn't make a video myself because why reinvent the wheel? This gentleman, some tech ed teacher, um, created this great YouTube video. Um, so it's linked here where it says video tutorial, and it's here in the slideshow, which you'll receive um, after this uh, webinar. And um, it, it shows you step by step how to do that. I will demo. It's not going to be a great demo. It's just going to be quick and fast. So basically, teachers, you need to you go to Padlet.com and you need to create your account if you don't have one. Okay, I already have one, and so I'm going to log in. You can see you can log in with your Google. You can log in with Microsoft account if you have that or Apple account. Um, thank goodness for Chrome. Chrome it remembers all my passwords because I probably wouldn't remember. And I'll check my password later. I can see all of my walls. Now, again, as I mentioned, I started using these a long time ago, this website. So it allowed me more than three. It, it didn't erase my old work. So that's the answer to that question. Like if you were to purchase Padlet, uh, $8 a month, then um, once the, the subscription is finished, you would probably still be able to see your Padlets. So it's real simple. We go here, make a palette in the top left. I see all the options, all the possibilities. Um, shelf, again, good for group work. Um, map is a map, a timeline is a timeline. So um, things, events in history on a line or processes. Canvas could be a process. I'm gonna do the simple one, okay? I'm gonna just do the wall because that, that's more suited for what we're gonna do here. Every time you make a new one, there's going to be a different background. It's kind of just giving you a default. Okay, so what I do then is, move this out of the way, um, you give it a name. This will open automatically. My grand wall now, we'll call this OTAN Padlet 2020. Then description 
it puts something silly there usually. So that's where I usually put the question prompts that I want students to answer. But um, let's just say, um, how will you use Padlet? The icon, um, it gives you different choices, all these little emojis, and that goes in the top left corner of your wall. Um, what I usually do, you can add your own at the bottom. I usually upload like my school's uh, logo or something like that. Um, I could up upload a picture of my students or a picture of me. So you can add any sort of icon, but something happy. I like this one. Okay, so you, you saw that appear in the top left corner. Um, now, here's the really cool thing. It gives you a, a default or just um, a URL, and, but there's no way. This is so ugly, palette. It's always going to be palette.com forward slash your username forward slash, and then it gives you something. But the beautiful thing is I can customize my URL. So I'm going to take out that guy R9 blah 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 and I'm going to put in um, OTAN Padlet 2020. Let's see if it's taken. It, it doesn't tell me it's taken. <laughs> okay. Then we go down to the appearance. Um, those candies are disgusting. <laughs> if you like them, good for you. But, um, so you can put in a beautiful picture as the background. You could put in a texture or a um, pattern, a solid color, a gradient, or you could upload your own picture. So in the past, I've sometimes uploaded a picture of our school or something, or even a picture of the students. Let's go look at the pictures. Let's see something. Be oh, there we go. Beautiful sunset, watercolor sunset. Then I'm always going a little back arrow. Okay, that's the wallpaper. Um, let's see if there's anything else. If I want to change the color scheme, I don't really notice a big difference in that. Um, if I want to change the font, mm, I'm fine with what we have. Attribution, display author name above each post. This would be especially if you're sharing this um, in a way that they have to put in a password, it will probably ask, you know, force them to put their name. I've never used that. I, um, I usually tell students, you put your name or a nickname. New post position, where do you want them to appear? When someone else comes to post after uh, the last student, do you want it to appear at the top, like the first, or do you want it to be at the last? I'm just gonna put first. Allow viewers to comment, yes. I, I want them to be able to comment on each other's posts. Reactions, there's some different kinds of reactions. No reaction, or students can like each other's posts with a heart. This is for voting, the thumb up, thumb down. Stars, so like a Likert scale, one to five stars. You can even grade students. Now, remember privacy. If this is a whole class wall, um, we, we should not be giving grades where all the other students can see. But if you had students make their own wall, maybe for a project, then you could give the grade with on that wall. Um, I'm just going to put like, and then we go to the back. Then content filtering. I've never, I've always made mine completely public and I've never had a problem. But if you wanted to, you could turn on the, um, the moderator filtering. This means that every time someone posts, you get an email with whatever account you decided to, to sign up with for Padlet. And then you'll have to come back to the Padlet and approve each post. And filter profanity, I've never had that. I mean, we teach adults, they, they should know, right? But if you wanted to, <laughs> you could turn that on and what it, I've never tried it, but what it does is it replaces bad words with nice emojis. That would be cute to try that out sometime, maybe just with your family, not with your students. Okay, so once I've done all of that, I click next and I can start posting, okay? But I don't wanna do that just yet. Um, Okay, make sure everything's good. Okay, close. Now I go to the gear icon and, oh no, sorry, not that one. I go now to the share icon and here is where I can invite people and they'll have to probably put in their email or something. Let's see what it looks like. So I don't even know, it's looking for other Padlet members. I've never even used that, but that's a way you could do it. Privacy secret is the default visitors can write. You can change the privacy, making it private, password, secret. I always keep mine as public. Probably secret or public is the best. Back. And then you see all the sharing options. 
you can copy the link and then you put that in Canvas or send it by email, a text. You can get the QR code. So you could, um, you could have students scan, use a QR code um, scanner from their phone and they could go ahead and scan that and it would take them right to the Padlet. This is for embedding, like if you're using a, an LMS and you don't want students to go out of the LMS, you could have this embedded right in your page. You can e email a share to social media, share on Google Classroom, okay? So um, I, I don't use Google Classroom. If you do, you should check that out and, and tell us how you do that. Maybe you propose a workshop how to use Padlet on Google classroom and then export once everything's done those are the options okay let me see if there are any questions before I share this oh really okay QR code doesn't always work I don't know I'm sorry um, I, I, I kind of like in the LMS Carlos I like to embed it and link it both um, so yeah I would do both just to be sure that that students can access it yeah, I'm sorry, Betty. I'm not sure. I, I haven't used the QR code a lot because I'm using an LMS where students just click. So if I could chime in. Mm -hmm, go ahead. Um, Betty, on the QR codes, their students have to allow their phones mm. to take a picture. So they have to allow can or not canvas, but they have to allow Padlet to access the QR code. Mm -hmm. um, they also ha might have to have a QR code reader installed on their phone. Some of the older phones, um, the newer, I should say, the newer iPhones and the newer Androids, when you just use your camera to do a QR code, it will open it. It recognizes it and it will, it knows what it is. So it opens the, the site. The older phones, they don't have that capability. They actually have to install the app, a QR code reader. And there are a lot of free ones out of there. So it is still possible, but I think that might be the problem on your students side mm -hmm. okay thank you yeah I, I forgot to mention that um i when i use qr codes i have students install a free qr code reader they open it they point it it focuses and then it will go straight to that internet site thank you melinda for clearing that up okay well let me go back here so and close that so um i've got everything set the way i wanted um again to share I'm going to just copy the link, okay? And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the chat. Okay, so I'm going to paste the URL in the chat. Do you see it? We do. And okay. if they want to open it, this is new in Zoom, folks. You cannot click on the link. Mm -hmm. So everyone stop typing. Stop, 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 stop. Stop typing. Stop. <laughs> because <laughs> right now the QR code is...